Hello indie game fans, today is my birthday, so as a special treat, let's take a look at some upcoming indie games using my favourite art style that I'm pretty sure will launch by 2021. Do check out the previous video on Metroidvania titles for more awesome entries like Gestalt, Steam and Cinder, The Last Faith and Flynn, Son of Crimson, but here we go. I happened to catch a glimpse of Fallen Leaf on Twitter, so indie developers, show your work. This is an 8-bit excellent title, capturing the look of retro classics, with 3 playable characters and a vibe that really reminds me of Wonder Boy. Four plus expensive world maps with non-linear progression, towns to visit, secret levels and more, this should be pretty awesome. I was absolutely stunned when I came to know of Windrunners since the skyscapes in this are majestic and gorgeous. It is a side-scrolling dogfighting game similar to Love Rousers or the more recently released Jet Lancer with a sci-fi, almost Gundam-like plot of a group of rebels fighting against a superior military force. On top of hero combat, there are gigantic metal monsters known as the Tormentors, which you need to destroy as well, but this is a standout example of pixel art environments and backgrounds done very, very right. I do think that this genre requires more entries, so I'm very happy to see this being made. Cheating a little on this one since Anno Mutatinum isn't exactly pure pixel art but mixes it with 3D environments and got the attention of many at conventions like China Joy and being linked to the PlayStation Indie spread. is an action platformer with RPG elements set in a cyberpunk city but also appears to draw on SCP so it does have some very cool inspirations which should translate well into a game. Coromon has been a constant feature in my upcoming Pokemon-like games videos, with it seemingly getting pushed from one year to the next, so if I have to hazard a guess, it has to be 2021, right? Growing up with Pokemon, the art style of this game really appeals to me as an alternative to the 3D models in modern Pokemon games, with there appearing to be a nice variety of monsters with interesting designs, one of the most important aspects of such a game. It has impressed in the demos put out so far, making quite a bit of noise in the monster taming community, so fingers crossed it will be released soon. Garden Story also keeps popping up in my upcoming games videos since I'm very excited for this farming action adventure game. So please look at some of my other videos for more detailed impressions and thoughts and please enjoy this very brief trailer. One of the most impressive action platformers in development is Steel Assault, 
being successfully kickstarted a little while back, with the most recent news is that they have signed with Tribute Games as a publisher, so the makers of Flint Hook, Mercenary Kings and Panzer Paladin, so they sure know their stuff. I'll admit that I'm not the biggest fan of the CRT scan lines, but I've seen footage of the game without it and it does look great, with an interesting zip line mechanic which seems to be its unique hook. One of these standout examples of an excellent community manager is whoever is running the Twitter account of Backbone, so do give that account a follow for more updates on the game. This is a detective noir title set in a dystopian version of Vancouver, British Columbia, where an authoritarian regime is in power and our protagonist has to find a way to survive sneak around, gather clues, interrogate witnesses and get to the bottom of the mystery. Amazing details and lighting in this, which makes it one of the most gorgeous titles on this list. Iron Vulture is an action strategy lane defense game that looks like plants vs zombies, but you're able to control and move around your six characters in real time. This setup is very interesting, since you do need to micro them to some extent, managing ability cooldowns and such, but as is the theme of this video, the character and enemy sprites in this are on point. Some awesome looking enemies and bosses as well, and should be quite the interesting entry. A title which has been a long time coming, I believe that Death Trash was initially slated for this year but got pushed to the next, but a post-apocalyptic RPG with eldritch horror elements will certainly get my attention. It's a world that gives off Fallout vibes, but with real-time action against absolute hordes of enemies. It's grim dark in all the right places, but will be releasing in early access. Have you ever heard the story about being hunted? I'm a fan of action roguelites, but a title that I happened to miss the last time around is Void the Go a very vibrant and colourful entry which looks fantastic. It looks like a pretty standard title on the surface, with both melee and ranged weapon options, but strangely enough, lets you play as Mario as well by allowing you to jump on the heads of enemies. Until you start hunting them. Another title which looks very well made, this should be perfect for action roguelite fans and could be the next big hit in the genre. A no-brainer title that has shown up before is Bushiden, most recently picked up by Humble Publishing, 
which as I've mentioned, is really knocking it out of the park. Unlike what some other people are saying, this is definitely not a metroidvania, since it is set in distinct levels, but is classic ninja action platforming with some similar vibes to Ninja Gaiden. You do get upgrades and can revisit levels, but the pixel art is on point and I cannot wait. I have to give a special mention to Everhood, the self-described unconventional adventure RPG that is one of the more unique entries in development. This has musical battles with some impressive looking action where a hero must jump, dodge and counter during battle. It has overworld exploration and puzzles as well, filled with strange and delightful encounters, and since everyone is probably thinking it, I'll just have to go out and say that yes, this does have Undertale vibes. I've been following this game ever since I found its demo on itch.io, so I'm happy to see that the full release should be out in early 2021. I'm a sucker for classically designed arcade style shooter maps, and Rengok Skies looks to be exactly that. Okay. It nails that new geo look, bringing back some very fond memories of time spent in arcades. There are four playable characters, each with their own unique ship weapons, bombs and story endings, with the leaderboard chase being a big component. Always a fan of the genre, and this looks excellently made and is one of the earliest titles for 2021. Of course I have to give a very special shout out to Chinatown Detective Agency, set in a futuristic depiction of my home country of Singapore. It's a classic point and click adventure game which takes inspiration from the common San Diego games, where you play as a detective, solving cases and unraveling a global conspiracy. Initially slated for this year, it was understandably delayed to 2021 but should make it out on schedule. The cyberpunk interpretation of my country, combined with the gorgeous pixel art versions of landmarks and local food are all excellently done and it is however not just limited to Singapore with glimpses of London, England, and Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia seen in screenshots, all of which are wonderfully crafted. A title which greatly benefited from the whole free prologue demo thing is Black Skylands, an open world base building top down shooter which looks pretty awesome. I'm usually not a fan of the top down perspective since I do think that it takes away from the beauty of the graphics, but it is an artistic choice which I respect.
It has you exploring the endless skies on your airship, landing on floating islands to adventure and conquer. There are base building, farming and crafting elements where you have a home father ship to return to, which, combined with the action, checks plenty of boxes that I'm interested in. Micra has also appeared in a number of such videos, being an amazing looking puzzle adventure game where you traverse the heptaverse looking for answers. It's a very curious sci-fi setting, with its share of arcane and obscure mysteries and secrets, and is perhaps more narrative focused, although it does have platforming and combat as well. I've been following this developer for a long time, who I believe is working on this project alone, who has had his share of ups and downs, so I believe 2021 should be the year for this fantastic looking game. Gastova the Witches of Arcana is an awesome looking action platformer taking inspiration from Mega Man and Wonder Boy where you play as the guardian witch of the land who has to face and defeat her former classmates. I think the inspiration is clear where the store page states that as the guardian witch, Gastova is able to utilize the power of other witches who find her worthy and I'm half expecting a Mega Man like stage select screen in this. Wonderful look, with puzzles, secrets and even upgrades for your character, this looks absolutely fantastic with an impressive amount of detail shown in the skyscapes and the mansion in the trailer. As is the story with many games this year, it was supposed to launch but got delayed, so I'm guessing it should not be an issue for 2021. Covered Dwarf when it had its Kickstarter campaign, so enjoy the narration and I'll be back in a little bit. The dwarves used to live in the mountain in great big cities until they were pushed out. Over time, history became myth and myth became bedtime stories. The long forgotten darkness has returned. The village is under attack. It sows lies and deception. My plan worked. <laughs> Eric, this is your fault. An unlikely hero emerges, armed with turrets and traps. Adventure into dungeons crawling with bloodthirsty trolls and monstrous creatures. This is a 2D tower defense title that controls like a 2D Zelda action adventure game, but you need to place traps and towers to help you against the invading hordes. I really like the look of this, especially the sheer number of enemies thrown at you with the lighting and lava environments looking great as well. There are RPG elements for both the towers and your character, so plenty of progression hooks and as a fan of tower defense games, this is of interest. I love life sim titles since they are some of the most pleasant, wholesome and relaxing experiences with Potion Permit looking very promising.
It has you essentially playing as a doctor or chemist, gathering ingredients and brewing potions to treat the townspeople. Explore the wilderness to gather said ingredients, perhaps having to fight monsters along the way as well, with what looks like a wonderful cast of characters and even your own loyal pet companion. More or less everything I look for in a game, this gets a spot because of that. In the pursuit of immortality, I evoked a ritual of ascension. However, the Church of Zolar lay in wait. Their meddling trapped me in infernal torment. Years later, and more powerful than ever, I have returned. I love playing as necromancers in games, and one that harnesses the power of modern platforms is the Unliving, allowing you to burn cities to ash by commanding hordes of the undead. It has a story setup and narration very similar to that of Irata's Lord of the Dead, where a powerful necromancer was trapped and sealed away in the past, but was able to escape years later and seeks his revenge. An impressive number of units on screen, and I cannot wait to dig in on this. Death will not stop me. Ever since I caught wind of Lords of Exile, this has been one of my most anticipated games since essentially this is a classic Vania title, so an action platformer more like early Castlevania than Symphony of the Night. I absolutely love the pixel art in this, looking 8 bit excellent and simply looks like a well made title. Impressive looking boss fights, backgrounds, and enemies, with a classic looking weapons interface shown in the top right. It was successfully kickstarted earlier this year and is already releasing in 2021, so more campaigns like this, please. I was very excited when Radio The Universe got a Steam page and a new trailer a couple of months ago since this title was kickstarted in 2013 and has been a long time coming. It is an action adventure game with some of the most impressive pixel art that I have seen set in the ruins of a long forgotten civilization with a dreamy and glitchy aesthetic. The Steam store only states a winter release window, so who knows when or what year, but another one which I believe has to be at the latest, a 2021 release. As a fan of classically designed JRPGs, I have to mention Chained Echoes, a superb looking one of these that is perhaps the title to look out for in 2021. It has a unique mix of sci-fi and fantasy, having dragons coexist with mechs and robots, where in addition to your airship, there are mech exploration and combat sections as well.
seems like quite the classic grand conspiracy story of most JRPGs, but has one of the most impressive pixel art styles that I've ever seen. Combat seems deep as well, with multiple playable characters and a complex skill and equipment system, which should be quite the experience. Of the games on this list, it is perhaps the title that might slip, having a tentative Q4 2021 window, plus it's a Kickstarter game, so fingers crossed that it will get released. One of the most impressive upcoming run-and-gun platformers is Mighty Goose, once again embodying the pure chaos that is a goose with the all-out action of something like a metal slug. Play as an intergalactic bounty hunter who has to bring the fight to the Void King, blasting baddies and robots in the way. Central to all of this are a number of war machines that you can pilot, from tanks, a unicycle looking thing, flying contraptions and so much more. It looks absolutely chaotic, where a hero can kick it up another notch when flames start to erupt from its eyes and as a big fan of the genre, this gets a very high spot. For the second year running, Cyber Shadow gets on the list, being one of my most anticipated upcoming indie games. Another ninja action game, this has you exploring a ruined world, searching for answers to uncover what started the path to perpetual ruin, rescuing members of the ninja clan in order to unlock new skills and abilities. To clarify, this developer and publisher have explicitly stated that it is not a metroidvania per se, so more straightforward action platforming, but it does still look awesome regardless. Initially slated for Fall 2020, the latest update in October mentioned that they needed just a little bit more time, so 2021 looks very likely, taking the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos and I will see you after the jump.